Okay, welcome everybody to an incredible night of learning a little bit more about the South Florida Jewish world. Uh, my name is Michael Ben Malach. Uh, there are many people in this uh, Facebook Canada group that's moving here to South Florida uh, that is familiar with me. Uh, you may have seen me previously on other webinars before or actually have been in contact with me as well. Uh, but I wanted to formally introduce myself for all the people that don't know me. Um, so I was originally born in Venezuela, but I moved to South Florida when I was eight years old. I've been living here for almost 35 years. Uh, living in all different types of communities here in South Florida. Uh, so Miami has really, really been my home. I am familiar with Toronto as well. Uh, and I'm sorry uh, for all the Maple Leaf fans while the Panthers are still in the playoffs. But with that being said, um, in regards to in regards to uh, my background as well, obviously being Jewish, I'm multicultural in many different ways. Uh, I talk to a lot of different people from all around the world. I help them out all the time in regards to moving here to South Florida. My specialty is in the Jewish world, um, specifically because of my background. Not only have I lived everywhere, uh, but also on a spiritual level, um, I come as a, a person. I didn't grow up religious or anything like that. Eventually, down the line, I became observant. Um, but at the same time, you know, mother Ashkenazic, father Sephardic, know Chabad very well. I'm kind of like a mixed mutt of all different things, which is what makes me who I am. And, and therefore, I know how to relate to all different types of people looking for all different types of needs across the board in all of Judaism. Uh, it doesn't matter where you stand. So I'm, I'm, I'm here to, to fill that void that a lot of people are looking for. Now, I also know for a fact, there's a lot of different type of people in, that are looking here to move down to South Florida that are coming from different backgrounds. And some people, whether they care religiously or don't care religiously, uh, their, their biggest thing is they want to be in an area surrounded by Jewish people. Obviously, with what's going on in the anti-Semitism that's going on in the world, I think it's a big thing, and I don't blame you. And moving to South Florida right now really has become uh, really the epicenter of most people that are Jewish making the trek over here, uh, whether you're moving from Canada, you're moving from New York, or you're moving from California, which are usually the big three. Um, a lot of people are moving down here, and there's there's a good reason for it. Um, the obvious reason, I'm sure you guys know this as well, uh, we have a very good governor who does not take anything lightly in regards to anti-Semitism at all. So you don't really feel any sort of like uh, danger. You don't feel any sort of like, oh my God, there's like all these, like, you know, God forbid, you know, some some people are going to try to uh, hit, hurt you or do something to you. Um, it's not like that. Uh, Miami is a really, really nice place to live. Um, and we have a very strong Jewish community here. And it's very spread out as it's, it's connected, but it's also very spread out. There's many, many communities. Um, so I, 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 uh, I'm first of all, I want to welcome all you guys in regards to being here in the, in the Zoom meeting, but I also want to let you know, you guys are on the right track. You're doing the right thing. And I know for many people, it's very difficult. I've spoken to many, many of you guys um, who will watch this now or watch this later. And I know it's hard. And uh, what I can say to you is that in regards to this move and this process, it really is not going to be as difficult as you may think it is. Um, and hopefully what I do recommend is for all those people that are here in this Zoom or later on who watch this later on on uh, social media, on YouTube, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to me. Um, the best way to reach me or contact me, which is going to lead to my next thing I want to show you guys, is if you just go to my website right here, it's called showmemiami.com. Now, give me one second here. Let me pop it open for all you guys. And I'll show you. That is a map. Let me show you here. Let me go back. So if you go to my website here, showmemiami.com or my ami, it's a play on words, my nation, my ami. Um, you go to this website and it's an incredible, incredible tool for look, people who are looking to move down here to South Florida. Because it really, it's a one-stop shop for all those people that are trying to understand what's going on in South Florida, what's going on in every community. Now, what I did is I kind of broke it down, all South Florida, in regards to the Jewish world, into 30 different communities. Now, what does that look like? If you click on here in the Jewish communities, you're going to see Miami-Dade, Broward County. You see how all the different areas in Miami-Dade, which is one of the main counties here in South Florida. Right. And you can look at all the different communities. I'm telling you, if you go to any of these, all Jewish people across the board, what kind of Jewish people, what does that look like? That's for more in depth conversation um, where you can actually either obviously you reach out to me. We can discuss this more in detail once I understand what you want. But it's very, very amazing to go through all of these. Go to Broward County. Same thing. Boca Raton, which is a huge, huge area. And it seems to be like a lot of different people. 
um, uh, from Canada are looking to Boca. I've seen a lot of people wanting to go to Parkland. Um, it's quite interesting the uh, the dynamics that I'm seeing here from Canada. Um, Canadians also have been known always to move to Hallandale Beach and be on condos, but Boca Raton is becoming a very interesting place for a lot of Canadians to move to. And partly I think what's going on, what I'm seeing here in regards to Boca and Parkland, um, and these kind of neighborhoods is the fact that you have this gated concept and it feels a little bit more, um, not just newer, but just cleaner. Um, whereas, whereas other parts of Miami just may be more, more city-like. So I don't know if that's a thing with Toronto in general, or but but it seems to be like the the trend. So if you go to Boca, for example, and you click here, I broke down different areas in Boca based upon synagogues. Now, between me and you, whether you want to go to synagogue or you don't need to go to synagogue doesn't really matter. The truth of the matter is I'm going to say something that is very important. If you want to live in Boca or you want to live in Parkland, Chances are that if you want to be in an area that's not close to the synagogue, it's going to be less expensive, um, which is interesting. So that opens up things. But if you do want to be more like literally walking distance to synagogue, is that something that's important to you? You'll find that the prices go up much higher because of the demand. Just a side note on that. So you can go that Delray Beach, Boyden Beach, all these different things. Now, um, I know that tonight's a Q&A. And so I just wanted to briefly, briefly say this is a great tool and a great website my phone number obviously is on this website uh, so feel free to reach out to me if you click on the website you're going to see there's an uh, entry to join my whatsapp group it's called the exclusive miami deals whatsapp group we have uh close to now almost uh 1500 people in these whatsapp groups and it's constantly growing every day like i said a lot of jewish people are moving down here and within all these people i put up daily stuff in regards to different properties that hit the market, new listings, information, uh, mortgage updates, things like that, which are really, really educational. But at the same time, we'll let you know about good deals in the market. And it gives you a good idea of what's available. Now, that being said, you know, a lot of people are going to tell me, well, Michael, I don't want to buy. I want to rent. And that's a different conversation, even though it's still good for you to see what's out there. We can discuss that more in detail in regards to rentals. Happy to help you with that department as well. Um, so I just wanted to lay that down. Now, tonight's agenda, essentially what we're going to be doing tonight is as follows. I just briefly, again, want to show you guys on a map what South Florida looks like in regards to Jewish communities. Um, you can watch the previous videos that I did a very, very in-depth, but um, I was told by Elanit, which again, I want to thank her for uh, for this opportunity. Uh, Elanit from the South Florida uh, moving Canada, the Canadians moving to South Florida group. And basically uh, she had mentioned to me, go ahead and do the whole map thing again. So we're going to quickly show it to you, not go so much in depth, just a little bit more of an overview on all the South Florida Jewish communities on a map level. And then we're going to hit the Q&As. We already have some pre-submitted uh, questions that were submitted to myself, and then we'll open up the floor. And hopefully, if you guys have other questions, please write them down and feel free to ask. I will unmute whoever wants to go ahead and ask. Uh, you're more than welcome to. So is that cool with everybody? A little bit of a thumbs up. Let me know you guys are, are there. You're with me. Any comments, questions before we start? You can put it on the chat box, chat if you like. Okay. So with that being said, thank you, Amit is actually paying attention. Good job. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Now we are going to quickly show you. Let me share my screen again, and I will show you guys little bit about South Florida. Now, I know everybody has different backgrounds as regards to South Florida. Some people may know it, some people may not know it at all. So why I like to start off here is in the area of Aventura, Florida. Many people have heard of Aventura. Um, and this is the, so to speak, the cutoff point between Miami-Dade County and Broward County. Now, so you guys can understand a little bit better on that. I'm going to zoom out even more now. This is South Florida. South Florida is a really big area, right? When we say I'm moving to Florida, that's nice. Florida is a big state. But South Florida is also a very big, big area. And it's divided by the three main counties. You have Miami-Dade County, Broward County, and you have Palm Beach County. So in Aventura, we're going to scroll from actually go all the way down south. Oops, excuse me. Go all the way down south. And just quickly show you this. It's very cool. We'll do it fast. The communities begin like this. You have my famous Miami Beach. Who doesn't know Miami Beach? South Beach is all the way in the bottom. Not really recommend you move. But you got Miami Beach right here off the quarter 195 on the ocean. All the condos, beautiful single family homes across the board. Very expensive area. 
uh, single family homes start uh, right now at about two point something million and condos, depending on what size you're getting, could be starting in the 500s. Now, as we keep moving up, we have Normandy Isle. Normandy Isle is right above here. It's the next really featured community that South Florida the Jewish community has to offer. It's literally located around this little island right here. And then it leads to the famous Surfside. Surfside and Indian Creek. Um, Indian Creek is probably the most expensive area right now in South Florida. Uh, Jeff Bezos just bought another home here. Uh, probably spent about 80 to $100 million on another home. <laughs> so Amazon has taken over Indian Creek. Uh, there are other very famous notable celebrities that live here, including Tom Brady um, and the Trumps. Um, so they, uh, they uh, Trump's daughter, I should say. And so they're, they're got here. But Surfside is a great area, amazing, amazing Jewish area. Um, you have amazing beaches that are here. You have single family homes. You have some condos, obviously, all around the beach end. Um, you have tons and tons of synagogues. You have all the best restaurants and kosher restaurants are all located here on a, on, a, on a row. Whoever's come to Miami to visit should know what I'm talking about. So you have Surfside, you have Bay Harbor to the left, Ball Harbor right above, one of the more uh, ritzy, also very expensive single family homes in all South Florida, located here in Ball Harbor. Who can't forget about the Ball Harbor shops, one of the most expensive shopping centers. It's all located right here. Beautiful beaches. We move up a little bit more as we keep rolling up here. We have Sunny Isles Beach. Sunny Isles Beach is a beautiful area um, with incredible, gorgeous looking condos all across the coast. Um, beautiful area to live. Uh, they have single family homes here as well. And we keep rolling up a little bit more. We have Golden Beach. Golden Beach is another very, very beautiful area. Single family homes start here like around $5 million and up. So this is essentially all around the coast. If you want to keep going up the coast, we can. We'll go into Broward County quickly. Up the coast, you have Hollandale Beach, which I was mentioning before. A lot of Canadians uh, moved into this area. Hollandale Beach is all this area right here. Um, you have inside here as well, Three Islands, also very no known area as well. Then you have Hollywood Beach, East Hollywood. If you see on my website, it's called East Hollywood, Hollywood Lakes. Beautiful homes, great area to live in, very, very up and coming. Uh, we can all discuss that as well in a different time. Now, this is essentially the main main area of, of Miami-Dade County. There are other areas as well. North Miami Beach, very well known for the more religious uh, black hat community. Um, and then you have in here Highland Lakes, Oak Forest, um, Sky Lake. These are all areas right here where I'm moving my arrow right now. You can take a look at this. These are all the single family homes located next to Aventura, Florida, which leads to Aventura, Florida, which is an incredible place if you want a condo, a super, super Jewish area. Um, a lot of different type of people involved in Aventura. They have famous Aventura Mall, very health conscious. It's a beautiful area to live. So you have Aventura. Now, to just back up a little bit more, uh, I'm not going to go into the smaller communities, but here's one community that must be noted as once you go to Broward County, you have Hollywood. Hollywood has become a huge place where a lot of people moved to recently. Um, and Hollywood is divided into different communities. You have, and again, you'll see on my website, if you go to Broward County, You'll see if you have Hollywood Hills, you have Emerald Hills. Emerald Hills is the biggest one out of all of them. That area ballooned, went crazy. Um, again, if you're Israeli, for example, you might want to look into there. Um, and you have Hollywood Hills, you have there. Um, right above it, you have Griffin Road, which is another area. You can be on the water, literally under a million dollars, which is very, very nice. Cooper City is another big area a lot of Canadians are looking to as well because it falls under the umbrella of that thing I was telling you about, that Parkland Boca thing where you're like in a gated community. Not all of Cooper City is gated, not at all, but there are many gated communities within Cooper City. It's a very, very good area for education. If people are looking to put their kids in public schools, Cooper City is one of the top, top places for kids in schools. Cooper City is like amazing. You also have the David Posnack JCC, very well known beautiful beautiful campus beautiful uh everything that's going on in that area uh some jewish schools that are also worth noting there again not for this uh zoom but we can discuss this more in detail again either on a private level or we can go over it with you like this as you're seeing it right now we can break it down um and then just to speed it up quickly we head over here you have other communities like plantation uh which is also starting to become really really popular um you have fort lauderdale which is more of a Miami Beach, city-like, on the water, very ritzy and gorgeous as well. Beautiful. Fort Lauderdale is a beautiful area. 
Um, and we keep going up more. Coral Springs, another area, very, very, very good for prices. If you're looking to buy a single family home and you're not so keen, like I don't have to be by the beach and I could still be, you know, a good, you know, 35 minutes, 45, 40, 40 minutes away from like big South Florida in general. Coral Springs is a nice area. Parkland, I already mentioned before. Beautiful area, like really, really, really nice. Um, a lot of people looking there. And as we keep going up, you have Boca Raton all the way up here, which is a quite a large area. Very popular, very Jewish as well. Um, and clean and nice and it has everything you really need. So Boca Raton is definitely an incredible area. Moving up a little bit more, you have Delray Beach and then Boynton Beach. These both areas are still smaller, but up and coming. A lot more people are slowly moving into these areas and uh, they're also becoming. And if you go up a little bit more for those people that are trying to even go further out, you have Palm Beach, uh, which is not for this discussion at all. But Palm Beach as well uh, is also starting. To, a lot of people are starting to take a look at Palm Beach. But again, people ask me, they're going to South Florida. I want to be in Miami. And I'm like, you're going to be Miami. If you're going to go to Boca, you're not in Miami. If you're going to be in Parkland. You're not in Miami. So you also have to understand, like, when you want to be in Miami, you want to be in South Florida. You have to know how far is everything from everything. And does it really make sense, whether your job or et cetera? You know, there's a lot of factors, schools, right? So that's the story with that. I just wanted to give an overall outlying on the whole South Florida world. Again, if you were to watch one of my videos, I went much more in depth regarding each community. Um, if you go back and see those. Now, with that being said, I have questions here that people wanted to ask, and I'm going to address them. Some of them um, are not as, I would say, stronger uh, fortes in regards to real estate questions, but it's still worth just bringing them up. Um, while others are more of just like, I would say general questions, and some of them are very more pertinent regarding real estate. Um, please, again, once we're done with these questions that I see here, feel free to chime in. If you have any questions at all, I would love to hear your thoughts and comments. So the first question I have here is, what's the story with the hurricanes? Interesting. So if you come to Miami and you're actually worried about hurricanes, don't. <laughs> Just don't, because... Hurricanes is something that is quite in Miami. It's like, oh, there's a hurricane coming. It's like, yay, in the sense that not yay, in like in a, in a good way, but yay in a way where like I'm prepared. What do you mean by prepared? Nowadays, most homes, especially if you're now buying new homes or you're modeling new homes, we're putting something called hurricane impact windows, which are rated and meant for these kind of situations. Back in the day, if you look at early videos in Miami in the 1990s of Hurricane Andrew destroyed areas of South Florida, which is really scary. And I was actually was living in Miami at that time. We didn't have the knowledge, nor did we have the, let's say the um, enough education and understanding about hurricanes, I think on, on a local level. And also we didn't have the hurricane windows that were easily put in. Back in the day, people had different types of shutters, et cetera. Nowadays, you know, a hurricane's coming, you can easily prepare. If you have hurricane impact windows, just bring whatever you have inside your house. Hurricane happens, drink some wine and call it a day. Okay. Cause nothing's going to happen to you. The only way a hurricane can affect you is windows crack. And if that happens, air pressure comes in and the roof pops out, but that doesn't happen now because we don't have those issues anymore. Another things that people have are hurricane shutters. They still have them today. People, even the other day, a, a client of mine just bought a home with hurricane shutters. You just roll them, close them up and you're done. So it's not a big deal. It's nothing to be worried about. Um, yes, schools close down. Yes, some of the landscaping can get you know hurt or destroyed or whatever you want to call it. But overall, it's not a big deal. Most of the time it misses, to be honest with you. Most of the time it misses. And if it does happen, what's the worst case scenario? You're hanging out inside your house and you're with your family and your kids and, and, and you try to watch the news. And if the power does happen to go out, which it can, uh, it has happened, People have generators, and if you don't have a generator, it's also okay. And you're prepared in advance, and it's fine. So that's my thoughts on Hurricane. Not a big deal. Coming to South Florida, uh, it's part of the, uh, I, I call it like every every summer, every other summer, I'm like, oh, here's a hurricane that's coming, and it missed. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. So not a big deal at all. Uh, but also, I should say, it's important to notice that insurance rates have gone up drastically in South Florida. If you're planning on buying a home, you'll be shocked to find out that hurricanes and not just hurricanes, but uh, between wind, et cetera, so many people do so many claims that um, 
they couldn't the insurance couldn't handle anymore. So they went crazy on the rates and it became a lot more expensive, so to say. Uh, can people are people still getting their insurance? Of course. And it is what it is. It's just part of your costs. But you should know that definitely has gone up a little bit more than normal in the last couple of years. So that's the deal with hurricanes. Next question I see here is in regards to best neighborhood to rent in if I'm like looking to come down to rent in for the year while I'm getting my immigration papers, et cetera. And my thoughts as follows. This really depends on the kind of person you are. So what does that mean? Meaning if I'm in it because I want to be living, let's say in the Jewish area, of course, that's why we're here, right? But I want to be living in a condo and I want to have access to the beach and shopping and fun stuff and still be in the city. So Aventura would be probably one of my number one choices. If I want to be living in a condo kind of a situation, if I'm renting a condo, because there's so many different condos there. Some of them are really, really cool. Uh, some of them are more modern. Some of them are more classic. You have gorgeous water views, gorgeous water views in Aventura overlooking the bay. And then some of them can look out to the bay and far away to the ocean. It's beautiful. So Aventura would be a great place. Also depends if you're single or you're not single, right? So there's so many different factors. But um, that would be one. Surfside definitely would be on my up there number two. Surfside being Surfside Bay Harbor area would be very good to rent in. Um, whether it's a single family home or a condo on the beach would be really nice. Same thing with Sunny Isles Beach. Very nice area uh, just to rent and enjoy the ocean and enjoy your time here before you actually you know move out to a more uh, solid place wherever you're going to live to. If you don't care about the actual Jewish communities at all and you're more like, I just want to come here and experience South Florida and Miami, and you are not don't care about synagogues, we don't care about this, go to Brickell, go to downtown Miami, go to the performing arts area, or hey, even go to South Beach. Like these, <laughs> I mean, South Beach, again, depending where you're at. But these are all areas that are like now booming with so many people culturally across the board, gorgeous towers and buildings and condos and um, lots going on, action, entertainment, the whole nine yards. So these are, again, if you're interested in that, we can discuss that. Um, and then from a single family home perspective, I'm just looking to rent out, try a community. I always say, go with your, go with the easiest, safest bet. And that's most likely going to be Hollywood. Hollywood is a great area as a single family. I'm coming with my family, Cooper city. This is also like also works. Um, and they're located to a lot of good schools and you're just in the mix. So like, I feel like if I'm going to try one thing just to rent out, those would be my, my number one options on those. And of course, Boca, you can try Boca. But again, if I'm going to go, I just want to be there for the year. Again, depends what the situation is. If I'm going with my family, uh, if I'm going by myself with a couple, I can't, there's so many different factors here. So that's why it's hard. These questions are like very, very vague. Um, but you can also look into Boca as well as another great option for rent. Um, so there's a question here, just to sum it up quickly. My daughter, were Orthodox and... My girls are teenagers and want to know what I can do to have them hang out with other teenagers or something along the lines on a social level. And the answer to that is on a simple level, the most organized uh, organization here is we have is NCSY. That's on an orthodox level. You can join that. But the reality is most of the time, any teenage girls that are coming here to South Florida that are going to be in a school, that's going to be your your your, your where you're going to meet all your friends. Um, and within the schools themselves, they have their own activities and, and all that stuff like that. So um it's not like they have like a specific uh thing for again i'm talking about girls it's not a specific thing where we have a girls group that meets every week that's uh orthodox uh ncsy again would be the closest thing there are boys and girls in that but from the perspective of you know just meeting having girls groups in general that's the way to go the methodology is going through the school that you're in and that's the way you you connect with all your friends that are teenagers that are girls and the next question i saw here Regarding healthcare, again, healthcare is not my forte, so to speak. We're here we're talking about neighborhoods and real estate, but healthcare is something big. It's important. And I know from Canadians that are coming down here, uh, the three major ways to get healthcare is going to be private medical care, getting any general random company that's going to come in as a regular healthcare. Um, so there's plenty of companies across the board. You can get medical care from it's private. You have Medicaid and Medicare. Both of, both of those are through the government. It's a lot more affordable and cheaper. Um, and those are the mechanisms you can do through that. Now, um, that being said, if I'm coming in here as a Canadian, uh, as a new immigrant, and you need to get quickly uh, some health, you know, the health right now, quickly get healthcare, 
I, I know there is a couple of companies. It's something called the New Immigrants Healthcare. Uh, there's companies called Sirius, uh, Seven Corners, and Lloyd's. These are the three that carry them. It's like if you need health insurance right now and you're moving to South Florida, look into that. They also have short-term health insurance as well. Uh, these three companies, Sirius, Seven Corners, and Lloyd's. So those would be something if you want to get it immediately. But in general, there's so many different medical companies you can go through. Remember, it's not everything here is not just funded from the government. Uh, so you do have to pay for these things. Um, and some of them are not cheap. So again, Medicaid and Medicare is obviously more affordable, but <clears throat> it's uh, again, it's a choice where you're at right now financially. Um, next question I see here, again, not so as much related to real estate itself, but again, there's a little bit of part of real estate, I guess I would say, is the very famous visa question, right? I need to get my visa. How am I going to get my visa? I'm sure you guys have all started to look into that. Um, I think the best person to speak to on those things would either be, I have my own local uh, um, person that I know does the visas here, helps with immigration, et cetera. But um, I think within the own group itself in the Canadians group, I think uh, Eleni lets people know about somebody else. Either way, I know that the three main ways you're going to get your visa Usually it's going to be either through family, whether you're married to a U.S. citizen, that's one, uh, whether it's going to be through a business and investment, which a lot of people look into buying a business. Um, that's a big thing. Uh, people look into that as well. We can have a conversation <laughs> down the line if that's something of interest. <clears throat> or finally, it's through the employment aspect of things, getting an employment sponsor, finding the right job, the person who's going to give you that sponsorship, and those will give you the green card immigration to move to the United States and get all the benefits uh, from being here. Those are the main questions that I have here right now. With that being said, I'm going to open it up uh, on the floor. If anybody wants to submit a question through chat, that's fine. If, if you want to unmute yourself, I'm going to let you go ahead now and you can go ahead and unmute yourself if you have any questions at all. I see here any, this is a question from um, Jillian, I think, Jillian, any ideas how easy, difficult it is to find a job as a family doctor if I've never wrote my American boards? I'd have no idea, to be honest with you, how easy or hard it is. Um, I would tell you, Jillian, if you want, I do have some references of doctors that I do know. I may be able to link you up with them. You may be more than welcome to ask them that question yourself. Um, so, but I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question personally. But if you want, like I said, reach out to me and see if I can help you out with some doctors, and they can help you out with that. How much would it be? A, this is a question from RV. How much would it be approximately to rent in Cooper City for a four-plus bedroom bath home with a pool? Great question. Um, Cooper City, again, is a big, big area, depending where you're looking to rent. Um, I would say in general, you got to start thinking minimum $4,000 and up. I would say the, the bracket should look for between four and $7,000, depending on what community you're living in. Um, that would be something that's suitable for you. Um, there's some very nice gated communities called like Montero, for example, which is really, really nice. <laughs> and that's like the give and take, the, the number schemes. Uh, sometimes they're a little bit more depending how big the houses are. Uh, another question was, is Cooper City the same as the town of Davie? No, it's not. Cooper City is its own city. It's interesting, right? Let's, you know what? Let me share it on the map. I think it's kind of cool that we talk about it and show it to you. So Cooper City, let's go all the way back down here. Okay, it's interesting, right? Because like, if you look at the flow, right? Let me zoom in a little bit more. There's your Davy. there's Cooper City. So imagine you got Hollywood, right? We're talking about how big Hollywood of a community is. <clears throat> Excuse me, hold on. If you look at Hollywood, if you just keep going straight west from Hollywood, you're gonna run into Cooper City, okay? And Davy, which is literally very close, right next to I should say Cooper City, is on the northern, on the western part also. Hold on one second. Let me just open this up a little bit more. 
Okay. So here you go. Cooper City is a continuation of Hollywood heading this way. So as you can see, I'm moving with my arrow right now. This whole area here is Cooper City. Davies here. Davy also is part of this little fragment right here. But they're two completely different areas in regards to schools, in regards to even population flow. Um, in Davy, you're going to find a lot more land uh, kind of a home. Uh, there's more horse country, uh, horse country, um, but you will find that Davy is also very nice. It's, it's it's all agricultural. It's very very nice. Beautiful homes across the board in Davy, and uh, Davy is also very close to. Let's say you want my kids to go to um, the JCC. That's a Poznak. It's very close. They're all interrelated. Cooper City, Davy, plantation. Um, if you even are looking to get even something bigger, the Southwest ranches right here, they're all very close and connected with each other, but they're all separate. They're not the same. Um, so again, it depends what your what, what is your objective? What do you want your kids to go to school? All these things matter. If they're just going to go to private school, whether you go to Cooper city or Davie, it's not such a big difference. Are there Jewish people in Davie? Yes. Are there so many Jewish people in Davie? No. There's not as many as Cooper City. Cooper City is known to have more Jewish people. Um, so, And Cooper City has just become, again, because of the JCC that's there um, and also more synagogues that opened up in that area. So Cooper City has definitely been on the up and up for quite some time now. Um, but it's a completely different area. Next question I see. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay, where is the Debbie's asking, where is the best place to purchase and rent out via Airbnb? Wonderful question. And um, there are a lot of answers to that question. Um, and it, the answer really, the biggest answer, what I'm saying to say to you is depends on your budget. Because if you want to get yourself a condo, right, we'd have to go through the list. If you want to get a condo, most likely you're going to get something either in some you know smaller uh let's, let's make it simple miami-dade county has a lot more airbnbs across the board in areas that across the board whether it's brickle downtown miami winwood performing arts area um even in south beach uh, these are more heavily inclined airbnbs area because there's more tourists that come also down the line there's also some airbnb stuff that's located um, in San Diego's beach and hollandale beach um, and even in fort lauderdale beach if you want to talk about a single family home um there are tons of areas. Hollywood is always a good one. You can't go wrong with Hollywood. There's many areas within Hollywood that allow it. And it's pretty, pretty popular. Um, in Aventura and areas called like Highland Lake, Sky Lake, these places have tons of homes that are Airbnbs. Um, and I would say that the, 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 the biggest thing you have to know is that not only is the purchase price important, but he, this is the part that people don't understand. This is what also it comes to people are buying and, and looking as an investment. They have to know. If I'm going to put, let's say as a foreign investor, you're going to put down 25, 30% down, right? And you're expecting to come out even breaking even um, or even making money. Like, don't think that um, because interest rates are high right now. Uh, I think today uh, interest rates should be like somewhere like around 7%, 7.1 or something around the line of that right now, which for a foreign investor, add another point on top. So you guys are like at 8% if you're going through a foreign national loan. So it becomes a lot harder, I would say, to make money. Now, if you want to do it uh, with a cash purchase, different conversation there. You can be making a lot more money. Uh, there is an art to Airbnb in here in South Florida. You got to know what you got to do. I'm happy to, number one, guide you on a more than one-on-one -on -one level on that. Uh, again, it's a much more in-depth conversation in regards to what you want to do, what kind of Airbnb do you want to do, how, how involved you want to be in this process. You just want to hand it off to a management company. Um, and then the strategies you want to be on the water. Um, what does your backyard look like? Like, where's your location? And all these areas that I mentioned to you, they're all good. You just have to know the ins and outs, which I can help you with. Um, it's just understanding that because it's such, again, there's a lot of places to buy as Airbnb is what I'm trying to say. Um, uh, but it's very popular here and, uh, you can do this all day long and you get your, uh, you get your uh, city to give you the actual, uh, paperwork that allows you to do it and you're good and your money and you're ready to rock and roll. So um, Airbnb is huge here in South Florida. A lot of people's here were also recently 
a lot of people were getting out of Airbnb, to be honest with you. Some people were getting out. Maybe they're looking to get, get better returns in other areas, uh, which is good because that drove the market a little bit down. Prices went down a little bit because it was an influx of inventory. Uh, but that doesn't mean Airbnb is not good. I know people that are doing very well doing Airbnb. So, yeah. But again, uh, Debbie, I would say reach out to me and we can discuss that more in detail. Thoughts on Walnut Creek, Lisa? Walnut Creek. So I don't know what your background is, Lisa. You want to jump in? I'm happy to answer that. If you are um, looking for a community that's very Jewish, um, predominantly Chabad, predominantly Chabad, it's a very big, strong Chabad community, um, then I think Walnut Creek is very nice. It's very good. It's much more affordable. Um, and you're like, again, you're, you're kind of close to the, you know, you're not too far off the beaten path. I would say from like, if I was living as an example, I could be leaving in Parkland. That's kind of far away, but you're one you're not that far away. You're still in the mix, so to speak. Um, you're a little bit more West and South, but you have access to everything you need to get access to, but you're in a combined and a gated community and it's more affordable. Uh, if you don't care having a pool, a lot of houses that don't have pools there are houses that do have pools, but it's harder to find. Um, I like Walnut Creek. I just think it, it really depends. What is your objective? What's your goal? What are you looking for? Um, if you are look, I, I'm saying as it is, if you're a, a Jewish person who's Chabad and wants to go to like a Chabad kind of synagogue, I think Walnut Creek is one, Walnut Creek is one of the best known Chabad communities. That's the best way I can just describe Walnut Creek. I was asking, I'm sorry, there's the other person asked me before. I was asking because I thought JCC was in Davie, but I think you said it was in Cooper City. It is. It's in Cooper City. The JCC is in Cooper City. And again, amazing, amazing, amazing place. How much is a four plus bedroom bathroom home with pool for sale? Preferably gated, but assuming that's much more expensive. I don't know which area we're talking, we're talking about in Cooper City. Is this from RV? RV, is that what we're talking about? Cooper City? If it is, then I could tell you standard four bedrooms let's say in a gated community you're talking about one one two one three one four that's like the like number range to be in one of these communities like montero for example which is a really really nice one in cooper city i'm assuming that's what we're talking about um okay what else we got here through a lender it's eight to eight point two five percent reasonable hotels we know reasonable hotels to stay in. Um, meaning you're asking me where to come to self to stay in a hotel that it's reasonable. Um, I would say that uh, if that's what your question is, um, Aventura, A Loft. Those are like a really good prices of really nice, cute boutique hotels that is in the right in the smack of Aventura. Beautiful place to stay. Nice, does the job. Uh, hurricanes already spoke about. It says, how about hurricanes? I already spoke about it in depth. Feel free to watch this on the replay. I am Chabad. Haha. <laughs> why is it so much more affordable? Um, because of the location. That's the reasoning why. Because you are more west, um, and you're more like west south. So you're not as uh attractive, so to speak, as being a little bit more uh in the mix. That being said, like I said, I, I think it's if you're Chabad, I think it's a great community. I'm actually gonna be making a video next week um with the top. Uh, I think what I like to call the top five Chabad communities in South Florida. We're going to be working on certain different de denominations within the Jewish people. Top five, top five Sephardic, top five Ashkenazic. Uh, we're going to be working on that, but uh, that would be that would fall in my top five for sure. Um, and I guess that we can talk about that more in detail. But why it's more affordable, I think it's just because of the location. Okay, Cooper City, we're good. Thank you so much. Aventura Aloft. Yes, Lisa, Aventura Aloft. Take a look at that. Um, that would be probably one of the better places I think to stay that's more affordable and you're in the mix in a great area not in of everything surrounding you. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? You're more than welcome to unmute yourself if you want. I hope you guys enjoy my background behind me. I'm really not on the beach. It really is not nighttime right now, but it looks good. <laughs> I love being in South Florida. It's the best. Um, and okay. So if anybody else has any other questions, um, feel free to jump in. If not, I'm going to give it another, uh, 30 seconds to a minute. And then if not, then we'll sign off for tonight. 
and uh, we can always have more Zoom webinars if we want to discuss things more in detail. Oh, here we go. More questions. The cost of Jewish day school. Oh, that is a great question. Ah, let me second. Let me let me let me get a little time for that one. Give me one second. Jewish day schools. So the good news is that Jewish day schools are definitely number one from a scholarship financial aspect of things i know that they do very they do a good job i think in helping out a lot of people that's number one two you have step up step up became a big thing now where the government the florida government is giving money to anybody and i hope you can apply you get usually for private school you get an extra anywhere from like seven to eight thousand dollars um given to you from the government that you can use it for your Jewish education. This was a big deal. This was just passed uh, within the, the last uh, year and a half, two years, like one year and a half. It just happened. So like, that's huge. Meaning like, even if I didn't have a situation where I needed for scholarship, I like, here you go. Here's $7,000 just because, um, which is amazing. So what does it cost? A Jewish day school can cost anywhere as low as 15. I should say it the right way. Again, could be anywhere from 15,000. I'm giving you a high number of, of a, a tuition for one school all the way up to $35,000 uh, for another school, depending on the school you want to go to. Um, so I guess it varies. You'd have to look. I, if you go on my website, by the way, here's another cool thing. You can check a look at this. Let me see if I have it here. I could show you. Very cool resource. I recommend also you guys check this out. Um, let me share my screen here for you guys. Awesome resource on my website for this. Take a look. So you go to my website, and then you go to Jewish resources. Click here, and then go to Jewish schools. So here, that's my thing, by the way. Everybody should be clicking on that right now and joining that group. So if you go here, you will see something really cool. I have broken down South Florida by special needs, preschools, elementary, middle schools, high schools, boys' high schools, and girls' high schools, very all separate. So if you were to click, for example, on high schools, now, again, when it's high schools, we're talking about co-ed, right? So you look at high schools, these are all the different high schools that you can go ahead and, and look at. And we have the website here. Um, some of them will have a video, but it gives you a good idea. You can go on their website, click on their website. You can learn about the schools. All of these are all right now mixed high schools as an example. They're, you can go obviously look at them. I'm sure they have tuition information on every single one. So this is the perfect, perfect resource for that and have everything across the board on all the Jewish schools in South Florida. What else was another question? RV says, Parkland is described as a Thornhill, Florida. That's cute. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I was just uh, with another uh, Canadian client of mine who was just here with their family. And they did say that. They said Boca also has it. But Parkland has that, like, very clean... Um, What's the word I want to say? It's not suburbia, but kind of suburbia where like all the houses kind of it lookish, lookish the same a little bit. And it's just like, you know, everything's like perfect, you know? So yeah, they told me something along the lines of that. By the way, you should know with Parkland, uh, not to, you should be surprised. Uh, if you're planning on buying in Parkland, you know, you have to know, be prepared for maintenance fees because if you're buying a single family home, you're part of communities. And these communities, by the way, are amazing. Some of them have great, great centers with with the gyms and the pools and the and the basketball court, maybe and uh, amazing. Like really, Parkland is amazing. But also understand that if you're in Parkland, you're not in Miami. You're far away. Okay, where I live, I live in an area called North Miami Beach. Uh, even though I drive all over South Florida, almost I feel like on the daily. Um, Parkland is a, a solid you know, probably 40, 45 minute drive, you know, and like, that's like on a quick, quick, quicker speed, I would say. So um, you have to know that you're literally, if you're going to be in Parkland, like you're going to be in Parkland. You're like, you know, it's a, you're engulfed in this area. 
It's beautiful. I want to repeat it again. It's beautiful, but you're not in South Florida. You're not like close to everything unless you go to Boca and Boca still a, a good, you know, 25 minute drive, give and take to go to Boca. I like that though. Parkland is a thorn hill of Florida. Love that. Should actually make a huge advertisement all over Toronto. Come to the Thornhill of Florida. I love that. Next question. Um, do you know, wait, what is this question here? How often do hurricanes hit? I think we spoke about this. They don't come very often, but when they do, they hit. And and how often? I don't know. Last one I think that remembers. Also remember, hurricanes also are like tropical storms. So, so it's not even a hurricane. It's like less than a hurricane a lot of times. Um, and I would say they come every like three, four, five years, something like that. Maybe it's not so often. Do you know what the prerequisites are for a Jewish high school? My kids have only ever attended Jewish public schools in Thornhill, but the schools have mainly Jewish population. What do you mean by prerequisites? I mean, if you're going to go to a standard Jewish high school, if it's a day school, they should give you no problems at all to get into any of these schools. Um, I don't see that being really an issue. Like it says Hebrew speaking, meaning, okay, so again, Every school is different. Most day schools are pretty open where you're standing in regards to all these things. My kids don't speak Hebrew. Okay, so they're going to have to learn. But I don't think that's a, I don't know for every single of these day schools is that's going to be a prerequisite. Oh, you don't speak Hebrew, you can't come. On the contrary, they're more interested if you're being Jewish or not Jewish. Um, Hebrew will come and it is what it is. Um, so I don't think that's like, now obviously if you're going to go to more of a uh, more of a strong or orthodox school, that might be a problem because again, they're gonna it's gonna be harder, much harder to keep up. But I think in a day school, there might be more open to that. Plus, you can get tutors on the side if necessary. Uh, I don't see it being like the end of the world. Um, and again, we can discuss that if you want to reach out to me, you can kind of look out to other schools that might be more openly friendly to that, which there are. There are definitely a hundred percent are that are more open to that. There's plenty of those. Anybody else? Okay. So with that being said, I am going to close off uh, tonight's Q&A webinar. And I want to thank all you guys for coming out to participate tonight. Um, like I said, and I'll repeat it one more time, feel free to go to my website, take a look at it, take advantage of it, learn, learn whatever you can from it. Um, you can see what's for rent, what's for sale. Um, you can uh, look at the schools, you can look at the different groceries, synagogues, markets, uh, all, everything within the communities where they are. So it's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, that being said, also, for those who want to write down my number again, I'll put it here on the text as well. It's 305-978-5988. Feel free to WhatsApp me. And um, if you want to have more of a deaf conversation, happy to have that with you. I can guide you a little bit and uh, put you on the right track. And uh, for those people that are seriously looking right now to move to South Florida, my re only recommendation is uh, if you're still even planning on moving for the next school year, you got to start hurrying up because uh, spaces and schools are going. A lot of people are moving down here. And um, yeah, it's time to get your act together and move on that because it's happening and, it, and it's happening quick. So I would definitely recommend if you're ready to go, let's get Let's talk about this. Let's see what we can do to get you in the right community. And, and go from there. And then for those people that are still kind of pondering what the situation looks like, I'm not ready yet. Um, or like, I don't even know if I'm going to move to South Florida yet. My only recommendation is one thing. And I want to say to you straight up, I don't know. I don't know what the current world situation is going to be in the next many months to come, but I do know one thing. The situation in Canada is not good. And if you have difficulties being a Jew and not feeling good about being a Jew in a place, that's not good. And for you to prolong that is also not good. Now, if you're going to say, me, Michael, what about my business? And what about the visa? I hear it. And I'm not telling you, you know, I get it. But on the other side of the coin is like, if there's a mechanism, if there's a way that you could still move down here and kind of still figure it out or have a remote job, maybe you have a remote job, you could still do it for Miami, but like, oh, I'm comfortable in Toronto. Like, still really start thinking about making that into a, a much more, not only like a pipeline or a pipe dream, sorry, I should say pipe dream or a thoughts, make it into action. It's not as hard as you think. I'm telling you, I spoke to a lot of people from Canada. I've been working with a lot of people from Canada. They're more surprised at how easy it is, not as hard as you think. So, but one thing's for sure, we need to be in a place where you feel good about being who you are, 
who God made you to be, and uh, you should feel proud. You should feel proud of who you are, and Miami is a great place to feel proud of who you are. I always say to people, it's like until everybody has to get to Israel one point or another, Miami is the next place place to be, and that's the truth because that really feels like that here. Um, so that's what my like my last thoughts. I want to leave it with everybody here, and uh, something to think about, and ponder about. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm here to help you guys and you know, all whatever it is that you need in regards to you move out here. And uh, we'll be in touch. I hope everybody has an incredible rest of your night. And I uh, look forward to meeting all of you, uh, whether on phone or in person when you guys come down here. Much love to everybody and have a wonderful, wonderful night.